You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Prescription for a Miracle with your host and spiritual psychologist, Dr. Julianne Blake. Let Dr. Blake help you break through barriers and access your complete and full potential. You can create miracles in your life, whether it's your health, your finances, or your love life. So please welcome the host of Prescription for a Miracle, Dr. Julianne Blake, and become the miracle creator you desire and deserve. Hello, this is Dr. Julianne Blake. I'm doing live for you a prescription for a miracle. And our title for today is How We Heal Depression with Feminine Power. We kind of went into feminine power last week. So I wanted to have that be in the title. So you know, we're delving into feminine power again today. I actually had wanted to call it How We Treat Ourselves to Heal depression because uh, because I just love the idea of treating ourselves because of the double meaning because it's both medical treatment it's how we actually treat depression and it's also you know how we take care of ourselves how we feel about ourselves how we treat ourselves like we would treat another person a friend an enemy a family member however you relate to them So treating ourselves is very, very critical to me for emotional issues, especially anxiety and depression. So I'm going to go into that a little bit today. But let me first start just for people who haven't been here before telling you about the show and why it's my passion and what my purpose for the show is. You know, it's really a heart It's a heart matter for me. It's something I feel deeply in my heart that, you know, we're all, I know this to be true and I, and I also have learned it from many great teachers and I want to share it. Some of you already know it, Um, but for everybody who doesn't or who can take it in at a deeper level, I want to share that we are incredibly powerful beings. We're we have this innate power within us that we came in with to heal and to create what we truly want in our lives. But we were born without a manual. Nobody told us us how to use it and how to access it. You know, we don't have the instruction book. So we have to create it. It's been created by some really, really great, great teachers, therapists, and philosophers. And, you know, also a lot of us who've been seriously ill have learned it from experience. So I want to share that at the deepest levels I'm capable of for anyone listening who wants to go deeper into their innate power and and, and learn how to access it and change it. You know, it's uh, we're all giants. We're capable of immense, powerful creation. And most of us don't know hardly anything about it. We're just, we're very unaware of it. So so I want to have us begin to actively access that power to create and to take small steps because they don't have to be big. They don't have to be hard. They can be easy and fun. So we're going to take small steps to fix a problem or challenge that we thought was unsolvable that's right what a miracle is right is that we're going to create miracles we are going to solve 
unsolvable problems that we didn't think we were capable of solving. We thought we had to have somebody way bigger and more powerful than us, like maybe a great teacher. For some people, it might be their parent, their father, their mother, a great teacher, or a saint, or maybe even God. You know, for some of us, it's like, I can't do that. You know, I want God to do it. Whatever is true for you, it doesn't matter because you are way more powerful. You're more of a God than you have been taught to believe. I know that because as part of our society and our culture, I'm not, I know I wasn't taught anything about what I'm capable of. I was mainly taught that I couldn't do things. A lot of things, believe me. And you know what? It's not true. It's totally not true. We can do amazing things when we decide that's what we're going to do, no matter what, and put our intention on it. So is there, can you think of anything that you've been stuck with, like where you've really felt that, you know, no matter what you tried, it just didn't work? I know for me, um, it's a business thing. Like I grew up being told, you know, women don't do business and they really can't and they don't know anything about money and they don't really know anything about numbers. And I actually, I lived that. I was bad at math. It was terrible. It was embarrassing. And, you know, it was partly because we kept changing countries and currencies and, you know, it just didn't make sense to me to go from the English pound and shilling which like Americans don't know much about, um, to the dollars and cents, which makes more sense, but it didn't to me when I was 10 and I never, you know, really heard about it before. So that, you know, that was an issue for me. I tried to create a business online and, you know, I just kept on failing. So until I came to that decision where, hey, this isn't working, I need to find a way to fix it. And then, you know, I've started to fix it. It's very remarkable. So has anything come to mind for you yet that you have not been able to solve where you feel stuck and like you need a super powerful angel, fairy godmother, or a guru or a teacher or God to step in and fix it for you? What's, what's come? I'm sure something is in your mind, so let it come. And when you get the idea, good. See if you can think of a small step that you can take. What resources can you access that would assist you now? Can you imagine yourself doing that? It may not be easy, and it may be way easier than you think. It can go either way. Um, and it may take practice because there's a lot of things that are new to us that we just really have to practice for a while. And then it's like driving, right? And then it becomes sort of natural and you don't, you don't have to think about it anymore. So just a little practice to start, maybe even a little more for a while until we get the hang of it. It depends on, you know, how stubborn your mind is or how flexible and eager to learn. So let's start small and just do one step at a time. So like, I mean, if you want to lose weight and you can't stop eating everything you crave, what's one little thing that you could change in your plan that you would stick to, that you'd be willing to stick to, but it's just a small step. It's way, it'll make it just way easier. So once you imagine doing that, notice how you feel now, now that you started to make that impossible task seem a little more like it might be possible. Wow. So just hold on to that possibility in your imagination right now. We're going to be taking a break shortly. And, you know, when we come back, I, w I want to show you how you're way more powerful than you've ever imagined. So this is Dr. Julianne Blake prescription for a miracle and we'll be right back 
author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, Unlock Your Full Potential with Limitless Growth, published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and Tune in radio. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Hello, Dr. Julianne Blake here on Prescription for a Miracle. You know, that might have been harder than you wanted it to be, to imagine getting through an unsolvable problem. And the reason that for that is because we've all been limited by our subconscious programming. I've talked about that before. You know, it's we all have like it's like we have a set point with our weight. We have subconscious programming that's designed to protect us. Um, so, but we're going to start to change that right now. Well, today we're going to actually work on um, something that's blocking us and change it from the inside out. That's what feminine power is. Um, so, and what it means is we're creating from the inside, from the intuitive or um, the emotional level. It's not the same as feeling, but it does originate from the inner experience. And you will see and feel the difference. So we're looking for, does it originate from the inner experience? So like in our society, masculine power is, it's the big thing. It's what we're familiar with. <clears throat> and that's what's predominant in our culture. And that's building from the outside in using strategic thinking, right? Creating a plan, making steps to do it, having a goal, implementing the steps and getting results. That's masculine power. And last week we focused on feminine power, which is newly developing and being starting to be used and taught in our culture because it's really the way that the matriarchal cultures have done it. You know, it's really the way that we're moving towards. Even the Dalai Lama said the Western woman may be going to save the world. It's because there's a new way of accessing our power to create from the inside out. And we experienced that a little last week. We're going to have more of it today. So um, it, it's our innate power. It's who we are. It's already within us. We're just, we're just not as familiar with it as we will become. And we're not we're not used to it. It's not like sort of our normal natural mode for most of us. It is to some extent with everybody, but um, there's lots more to go. So last week we introduced uh, very briefly at the end of the show some of these ideas. I want to go into them more deeply today. There are ways that you can support yourself with feminine power 
using our inner experience as the natural source of power. Lots of us have been afraid to experience our true inner power to its fullest, but I think it's time for that to change. So here are some ways to do that. One is to be fully present in the now, like in the moment. That means not phoning it in and just going through the motions, but feeling it as it's real right now. Two is to be authentically you, yourself. Not acting how you think you ought to be, but being who you truly are. No acting, no pretending, just what's real. Be fully engaged, not going through motions or thinking about it. It means you're enough, just the way you are. Please take that in. Repeat it to yourself right now. I'm enough. I'm enough, just the way I am. Breathe it into your heart. Take a breath right through your heart and breathe that in. I am enough. And let it become real because it's a reality. It is real for you right now. Three is we can use visualization. We've already done that in quite a few shows. And we'll, we'll always do it. But we want to do it in the present moment. I'll be guiding you today. And we use affirmations in the present moment, too. So we're sensing all five senses all the way through. So the fifth way is how do we treat ourselves? How do you treat yourself? You know, the psychologist Abraham Maslow developed a hierarchy of needs for the developing human being, starting with survival needs like food and shelter. That's the basic bare minimum. To begin, and we have to have some, some nourishment and we have to have shelter. And so um, one of the things that they have found in research studies of, of babies at an orphanage is that emotional survival is critical, too, to a thriving human. You know, they did a study at uh, several orphanages where the caretakers... The people who took care of them, they fed the babies, they gave them water, they had everything they needed to eat and drink, they were warm, they were sheltered, they, you know, everything was good, but they were never touched. They were never held and they were never touched. And other babies in other places, you know, in other places similar, um, were, were held and touched and the difference was incredible. The ones that were never held or touched became weak and got sick and they died. They died in huge numbers. It's pretty appalling, actually, when you read those, those studies. All the basic needs were met except for touch and the feeling of connection. So that has been found in that research and other research um, to be incredibly important to not just survival but to the thriving of the child the next the next things Maslow talked about were shame and guilt and dealing with those kind of emotions early in life that's that's also a function of relationship that's how they come in and then we develop skills and self-expression authority and thinking and then the top one is self-actualization. But on the way to self-actualization, you know, the power of relationship is really immense. So let's talk about the power of relationship right now. It's primary in our development. It's the basis of our subconscious programming, which really creates 95% of our behavior. That's the research. Um, it was like what we were taught and told by our parents, teachers, caregivers, older sibs, and everybody around us. And it's the basis of our sense of worthiness, which means what we think we feel and what we deserve. So it's huge. We are going to take another break. I'll be right back with more on what we deserve and how we got to that point. 
This is Julianne Blake, Prescription for a Miracle, on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay tuned. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History and the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Le Col des Beaux Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20 year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Hello, Dr. Julianne Blake here again. We're talking about worthiness and what we think we feel we deserve. You know, we got trained by by our real, our parents, teachers, caregivers, older siblings, whoever was around us when we were tiny, and I mean tiny, you know, when we were still in the womb, when we were infants, toddlers, and up until we were seven, it was pretty much... It cast in stone by the time we were seven. Could slightly change till we were 12, but not, but often did not. And after that, never changed unless we made a conscious decision to do so and either, either had a therapist or somebody really powerful who could actually teach us how to change our subconscious programming. So let's... Um, Let's let's look at this right now. Why will it never change except by the conscious decision to do so? Um, well, what we think we deserve right now and where it came from. Well, let's take an example. Let's have an experience. Think of something that you want very much. I'm sure it came in already, right? What is it? Let it come to your mind. I'm sure it already has. We do tend to know what we want. Now, imagine yourself having it. Notice if it's a challenge to allow yourself to have that experience. If not, let yourself enjoy the experience. Breathe into it. Let it become real and fill you up. It's yours. Receive it. Take it in. If you have difficulty receiving it, notice how that feels. Do you know where that difficulty came from? Who in your life, your early life, gave you the idea that you are not worthy to receive? Who was that for you? Could have been more than one person. Could have been a lot of people. Um, and it was, it was definitely reinforced a lot for you to get that as subconscious programming. Did that person who influenced you so much, did they feel they were worthy to receive abundance and blessings and things that feel good? Maybe not. Why do you think they didn't feel worthy? Who in their life gave them that idea? Maybe it wasn't a person. Maybe it was something else. What do you think it was? The answer is 
will come into your mind. Just let it, let it come in. Do you have a sense of what you can do to become worthy to receive? Let the answer come in. It will. If it's not, just relax and breathe into your heart. Take the air in, loving it, letting it fill you with light and love. And then release that air, letting all the tension and tightness go out with the air as you exhale. Fill yourself with beautiful radiant light and let it release all the tension out with your breath. Or it can go down into the ground through your feet. So the answer is in you. You'll find it in your heart. Let it be known to you. When you know what it is, take time to honor it. It's actually there for a reason. Your subconscious mind, your subconscious programming, and your loving or well-intended caretakers, I hope they were well-intended, were working to protect you from danger. That was their intention. And that's the intention of your subconscious mind still today. They only want what's best for you. Would you like to reprogram that right now? Yeah, I sure would. I'm working on that. So if you would, right now in your conscious mind, what do you think that danger is that they're trying to protect you from? And how can you open to changing that possibility of that danger? How can you negotiate with your subconscious guardians, your mind and whoever it was that taught you to change that so they can so they'll give up their need to protect you and you can tell them why they don't need to can they trust you do you trust you let's ask your subconscious mind do you deserve to receive that whatever it is you want so much whatever it is do you deserve it Please tell yourself right now why you deserve it. Can you make a case for yourself deserving it? Do that. Do it right now. Why do you deserve it? And please listen to yourself. You know, your mind is incredibly creative. And what is coming forth right now from your inner knowing is very powerful. And it's true. Do you believe yourself? If not, what do you need to believe yourself, to believe that you deserve to receive? Be totally honest with yourself, because that way, if there's a block, we can fix it. We can change it. You have that power, but it starts with being honest with yourself and real so that we can address the problem and the block. What do you need? Okay, what is it that you need? Really be clear about that. And now give that to yourself. Whatever you need to not need to be protected, whatever you need to be free to receive, imagine having exactly what you need to trust yourself and to be worthy. Yes, worthy of receiving everything you want and everything you're capable of creating, which is way more than you've ever thought before. Worthy of receiving all that you desire right now and at all times in the future, always. If you have any reservations left or any doubts, then I want you to invite an angelic being into your presence that can command that you are now worthy of whatever you choose to create and receive in your life. See or feel that being in your presence now and experience them making that command. They are rendering you worthy. Worthy. Feel that and take it in. 
You've now taken back conscious control of your internal programming. You're free. You can have whatever you choose and create. So we are going to take another short break. But as we're gone, take a moment to think of what you want more of right now. What is that? What do you want? And we'll be right back. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. Hello, Dr. Julianne Blake here on Prescription for a Miracle, coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We've been talking about taking back conscious control of our internal programming so that we can become free and choose whatever we want to create. So if we decide and choose and create and render ourselves worthy, and we're looking at what do we really want to create. Um, I suggested you think about what you want more of right now during the break. Maybe you have, maybe not. Um, well, think about it right now. What What is that that you really want more of? Like, just focus on one thing, though. There may be a lot, but just pick the one that's, like, calling to you the loudest at this moment, okay? Um we have to start somewhere, and that's the the one that's the one that's calling the loudest is the best place to start always. So, what is that that's calling to you that you want more of? What do you want? Is it something you have the power and the compassion to give to yourself? You know, in a way, that's like asking you to be God to yourself. It's very challenging for many of us. Very. But, you know, it's one of those things that if we do it in small steps, uh, it gets to be easy and fun and simple. And you know what? You're going to love it. Love it. So we're going to do a, a brief meditation type process. So please know to be very careful. If you are driving, you really want to pull over for a few moments. You can listen to it later. As you might experience a shift in consciousness, uh, it's very available in this process. And I need you to take care of your own safety during the process. So I'm asking you to protect yourself so that I can offer you a profound experience. All of my listeners, I want you to have that. So take responsibility, and we're going to... Do the inner work now, the emotional level. Thank you. 
So now please think about how you would treat someone that you love that's asking for a way to have more confidence. You know, I think that's something we all want. And you might change it if you want something different. But right now, I just want you to experience this. You have someone you love, could be a friend, could be a child, could be just someone you love that's very special to you. And they're coming to you as a guide. They're asking you as a dear one for a way that they can feel more confident confident. So take a moment right now and close your eyes and imagine a close friend who you love dearly is by your side asking you for help to do something they've not been able to accomplish for a long time. Even trying with all their known resources, trying over and over again in every way they've been able to find. They're full of love for you and dedication to their goal also. They really want it. But they're also burdened with the urgency and the frustration of not being able to accomplish something so important to them. They just feel sort of humiliated by failure. What can you, in your great love, offer to them? What do you have in your repertoire to say to them? Say it now. Feel it deeply as you're saying it. Give them as much as you can give out of the resources you have. You don't have to solve the problem or fix it. Just give them the resources you have and the love. How does that feel to you? Let the feeling expand. Take it in and know that it is you. That's who you are. That's the resource that you have to give to someone you care deeply about. Let yourself feel and enjoy giving that, especially to someone you care so much about. How does that feel to you giving that? Own that feeling, take it in, and acknowledge that is yours, yours to give at your discretion to whomever you find worthy, whoever is worthy of your love. Now I'd like you to consider for a moment whether you could receive that. Can you receive that? Without thinking about it at all or if having and you don't need any reasons why. Are you worthy to receive that? Please be honest with yourself again because it's critical in order to move forward, especially if there is a block that you want to remove. You want to be totally honest and real because you're enough. This is critical for you. So are you worthy to receive that? No reasons are necessary, none. Are you? If yes, good. If just a little, we can build on that. If no, think about this. What would it take for you to become worthy or to consider yourself worthy? What do you need to consider yourself worthy to receive that? Are you willing to consider that? As the giver, are you willing to acknowledge that you're not an adequate judge of your own worthiness? Are you willing to be an unconditional giver, to be the giver of that caring, that loving, that acceptance? You would give it to someone else that you love. Are you willing to give that to yourself? If so, place your hand over your heart and see yourself beside you asking for help. And give that same caring acceptance and love and feeling of belonging and worthiness. Give that to yourself. This is the most important gift 
you have to give the greatest healing power there is. They actually say that love is the greatest healer. There's nothing more powerful on the planet than real deep love. So now please become the one that is asking you for help and let yourself receive it from you. Let yourself take it in and let it fill you. Let it expand until it fills you up completely. Breathe it into your heart. Yes. And let it become more real to you right now. And knowing that you can come back to it, to this feeling, this knowing, this worthiness at any time, please breathe it into your heart one more time and prepare to return to your life in the outer world. Bring your awareness back into the room and wiggle your fingers and toes to get grounded here and know that you are loved and you are worthy. We're going to take a short break right now. So just stay in your own inner space and enjoy that until we come back shortly. Stay tuned. If you're a person caring for someone living with dementia, then this program is for you. It's designed for families and friends coping with the challenges of caregiving. The foundation of care, Susan Kohler believes, is communication. Innovative Dementia Care with Susan Kohler provides strategies to keep the lines of communication open between you and your loved one, increase quality interactions, decrease the burden of daily care for you, the caregiver. Join Susan, 11 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network. Susan and her guests will share techniques so you can facilitate your loved one's ability to safely follow your instructions, participate in daily activities, and express daily wants and desires. To learn positive solutions, creative ideas, and practical strategies that will build a healthy foundation of care. Hi, Dr. Julianne Blake here. Prescription for a Miracle, coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So do you know that you are loved? And do you feel worthy of receiving what you really want? We kind of just took the first step into, into re-creating our subconscious programming. We took it out of the hands of of the people that programmed us as infants and toddlers, and we gave it to our conscious selves. Now that still needs some practice. It still needs some conscious reminding of ourselves. In other words, it's kind of like meditation. You do it every day, and then you kind of, you, we, we need to keep doing it every day in order to keep getting the benefits because we have to stay present with it and be engaged with it for it to really be changing our subconscious and our conscious state of mind. So we will be practicing and doing more pieces, more steps, but that's the beginning of really creating and reconstructing and discovering our own worthiness we're immensely powerful creatures. And you know what? You have a lot of resources inside you, some of which you've discovered and some of which you know nothing about yet. So there's great surprises in store ahead. And I think you're, you'll be very excited about it like I am. So know that you're loved, you're cherished, you're worthy. Those are all affirmations that we could use every day. I use some of them. I've made some of them a little more elaborate, and you can too. You can make them into, I love knowing that I'm cherished. You can, you can elaborate on them. But you want to keep them very much in the present moment. So I almost always start mine with I am. I'm loving knowing that I'm worthy. I'm loving feeling worthy of everything I want. And I 
just love being free, free to be me. I love knowing that I'm enough. So all of those, especially if you start within the present, I am, it's both personal, first person, it's present in the moment, it's always about you because we don't ever try to change anyone else except to give to them. But it has to be unconditional. So it's always about you. It's always in the present. The more senses you can put in there, I'm just loving tasting my favorite chocolate as I celebrate my success and my worthiness and my freedom. I'm free to be me. I'm enough. Just the way you are. And you are loved. So what are the major steps to take good care of yourself? To heal, caring, treating ourselves. You know, I mentioned it's kind of double-edged. You know, it's like, it means like a medical treatment is one kind of treating. And the other is, you know, how do we treat ourselves? How do we relate to ourselves? How do we take care of ourselves? So to treat depression, how we treat ourselves is how we heal ourselves. So I want to give you some pointers, which will be reviews, some of them. You treat yourself like your own best friend. You know, and that can be like anybody that you love. But you know what? You can also treat yourself like a beloved child that's depending on you, very young and trusting. Or you can treat yourself like a very wise, older, beloved guru or teacher that you know has immense wisdom to share with you. When you treat yourself like these other people that you have just awe and respect and cherishing for, you get to receive that. You know, it's kind of our first opportunity to reparent ourselves in the way that we wish we'd been parented. We don't have to change our parents or our teachers or anybody who was around us when we were three, four, six, seven. We can change ourselves. We can treat ourselves the way that we wish we had been treated. So number two, another way, uh, is to assume that you have much greater power than you ever imagined. Because it's true. You do. And you'll be discovering it. The more that you assume it, the more that you'll see it become real because that's one of the ways we create our reality is to start assuming and acting as if. Jack Canfield talks about acting as if. It's one of his success principles. It's how we move into really being able to assume and to feel the gifts that we have. We pretend that they're already real, and they become real that way. It's awesome. It really is. I recommend it highly. Uh, and if you want to read Jack Canfield's work, it's called uh, The Success Principles. And they're powerful. There's lots of them, and they're all powerful. So I highly recommend it. So the third way is after you're assuming that you have much greater power than you ever imagined, is to dare to use it right now. Yes, you really do have it. And it's really okay. It's fine. You are enough. It's right and perfect for you to be using it to create what you want, to give yourself what you need, and to change your world, to become powerful, to be able to teach Others who don't know as much as you do. Tips and tricks and all the things you've learned in your way. So think about how you would treat yourself if you were a very rare, precious, super special being that's incredibly valuable and must be very well taken care of. And keep with that as we go for a short break. This is Dr. Julianne Blake on Prescription for a Miracle. Stay tuned. 
Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBC. BBM Global Network. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language, and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3,000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Hi, Dr. Julianne here, coming to you live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So I just asked you, how would you treat yourself if you were a special, precious, rare being, incredibly valuable. Like, think of somebody that you are immensely, like, moved by. Like, you know, it, it might be Martin Luther King. It might be Gandhi. It could be, oh, there's immense numbers of people, and everybody has their own. So who... Of all of the people that you've been the most moved and impressed and touched by in your life, do you think who comes to mind that you would want to? Well, how would you treat them if you knew them and they were in your life? And can you imagine treating yourself the way you would treat them? You would treat them very specially and. You would make magnificent food and other treats for them. You would you would cater to them. You would offer them whatever you thought they needed or whatever they indicated would be helpful. You wouldn't hold back anything. Could you offer that to yourself? Can you imagine treating yourself with that kind of respect and awe? And it's cherishing, really. You would treat an animal that you cherished better than we treat ourselves a lot of the time. Isn't that amazing? Another tip is to surround yourself with really positive, uplifting, supporting people that are willing to give you a wonderful, positive feedback and support every step of the way. They might be members of a group that you're in, people that are willing to be accountable accountable and hold you accountable. They might even be somebody that has the same goals and that you can work on projects together where they would be happy to listen to you and support you in achieving your goals. Those, those are magnificent ways. How would you support them and keep them accountable? What would you ask them about how things were going? What would you offer them in the way of resources? And you know what? That's an amazing way to brainstorm what you could offer to yourself. The other thing is to think of ways that you can give yourself the support of an angel and brainstorm and dream of ways to do this. 
and you want to share this with your friends and cohorts, please share them with me. I'd love to hear them. You know, I don't have a comment place on my website, so I'm going to change that because I would love to hear from you what you think and your ideas. The brainstorming's amazing. I'm going to start a Facebook group. I will do it this week so that you can share with me there. And if you want to email me, you can go. You can do it at drjulianblake at gmail dot com. There are no dots. It's just dr for Doctor Julianne Blake at gmail dot com. I just want to tell you that I support you every possible way. You're welcome to go to my website if you'd like. I'm offering a free consultation to anyone who comes. It's my website is julianblakephd.com, and there's a page that's called coaching. You can just click on the orange apply now button and sign up for a free gifted introductory session with me. I'd love to hear whatever you're challenged by and what you're going for and work with you and offer you whatever I can. I'm fascinated, I'm interested, and I care. And I'm giving you all the love I can. So please take care. And I will be back next week with more. At some point in time, we're going to go into the physiology of depression and what we can do to change it in our bodies um, with natural healing. So today was the emotional part. And there's a lot of physiology that we can also deal with. So I will be back next week with more. In the meantime, great love to you. Please take care until next week. This has been Prescription for a Miracle with host Dr. Julianne Blake. Join us each week as Dr. Blake empowers you to discover your miracle. Right here on Dr. Julianne Blake's Prescription for a Miracle. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company. 